Pseudo random functions are used every time you connect to a secure website, but they don't get nearly as much attention as things like encryption, even though I would argue they are just as important. Let's talk about them. Hey friends, welcome to another video in my cryptography series. In this video, we're going to be looking at pseudo random functions. Now, the best way to understand PRFs is to compare it to something we've looked at before. You see, a PRF is very similar to a hashing algorithm. And to really understand their similarities and also how they are different, it's easier to see the definition of both on the screen at the same time. We define a hashing algorithm as a mathematical formula that transforms messages into deterministic fixed length representational strings. A pseudo random function is similar, except the output is arbitrary length, meaning whatever length you want it to be. It's the same as a hashing algorithm in the sense that if you feed the same things into the hashing algorithm, you're going to end up with the same output. But with the PRF, you get to choose how long that output will be. Effectively, it's like a hashing algorithm that feeds back in on itself. OK, so that's the basic definition of a PRF, but let's explore it a bit further. First, notice that messages and representational strings are in quotes. Well, that's because those aren't necessarily the best terms for what goes into and what comes out of a PRF. So let's first start by refining our definition of a PRF. A PRF is a mathematical formula that generates deterministic, arbitrary length value based upon some sort of initial data. The output of a PRF is indistinguishable from random data, meaning it looks just like random output, but it isn't really random. It's pseudo-random. The purpose of a PRF is to take a single key and use it to generate an unlimited number of keys. For example, let's say that we have the green and blue user again, and they want to speak securely to each other. Well, one thing they could do is use symmetric encryption, but symmetric encryption requires a secret key. In order to get that secret key, they can do a key exchange. The result of a key exchange will be some sort of shared secret that only these two users will have. And again, we'll be looking at key exchanges later on in the series, but for now, take my word for it that a key exchange allows two users to establish a shared secret over an unsecured medium. Now, this shared secret is just a bunch of ones and zeros that happen to be identical. And these users can absolutely use that shared secret as the key in the symmetric encryption. But what if they also want to do a Mac with each other? Well, now they would need another key. They could, of course, do another key exchange, but the problem is key exchanges are expensive. And that's where a PRF comes into play. What you can do is do the key exchange once, then use a PRF to turn this shared secret into any number of secret keys. If the blue and green user are starting from the same initial shared secret, they can turn that into any amount of identical secret keys. For instance, one key for symmetric encryption and another key for a Mac. But it doesn't have to stop there. Maybe these two users want to change their keys every hour. Or maybe they want a new set of keys for traffic going from green to blue versus traffic going from blue to green. Whatever their needs are, they can take the one shared secret from the one key exchange and turn that into any amount of keys using a PRF. So that's a more comprehensive definition of a pseudo random function and its purpose. But now let's talk about this initial data and what goes into a PRF. There are three things that go into a PRF. First is some sort of secret that are known only to the intended parties. In our example from a moment ago, that would be the result of some sort of key exchange. Then there's the desired number of bits. This simply identifies how long a pseudo random string of ones and zeros is going to be generated using the PRF. And finally, there's some seed data. This C data is simply a label to differentiate every instance of the PRF. The label doesn't necessarily have to be a secret. The idea there is if I'm running a PRF using only these two pieces of information, every time I run it, I'm always going to get the same output because the starting information hasn't changed. But this additional C data allows me to differentiate one running of the PRF from the next. I can run a different one an hour later, a day later, a connection later, or maybe build some sort of time code or something like that into my PRF so that every time I run a PRF, even if the secret or desired number of bits hasn't changed, I'll always end up with unique output. So that's the general idea behind a PRF. You can use it to take one secret key and turn it into any amount of keys that you want. But there's something else related to a PRF that I would actually categorize as a type of PRF. It's like a PRF, but more secure. Let's talk about it. Just like hashing algorithms, PRFs are built for speed. But there is something similar to a PRF that is not. And that something is known as a KDF. A KDF is similar to a PRF in that specific input data is always going to produce the same consistent output. But it's different because a KDF also requires SALT and a slowdown mechanism. In this context, SALT is simply additional random data that is mixed into the initial data. 
The purpose of this is to guarantee some sort of minimum level of entropy. And the slowdown mechanism can be any one of a number of strategies. One strategy could be running the KDF for a certain number of iterations. Meaning instead of going straight from input to output, you go from input to output and then recalculate the output a thousand times for the same KDF. That's what I mean by number of iterations. Another potential slowdown mechanism is to use math that is intentionally very memory intensive or calculations that prevent the ability to be calculated in parallel. Okay, but why would you want to do this? Why would you want to intentionally slow down your calculation? Well, it comes down to the difference in purpose of a KDF compared to a PRF. The purpose of a KDF is to make brute forcing the output infeasible. A good example of this would be something like password storage. Obviously, you and I know that it's better to use longer passwords. But there's probably a lot of people out there that are still using 8 character passwords or even less. But that's where salt comes into play. What the salt does is it adds some level of randomness to the password. So that even if you have a very insecure 5 character password, salt might add another 40 characters to your password, making it more secure. And remember, when you create an account somewhere online, they're not storing your password in clear text on some server somewhere. That would be very insecure. Instead, they're storing some sort of hash of that password. And in this case, the hash is combined with the salt. That's how the salt adds security to your password. It makes it so that whatever you feed into the hashing algorithm is a minimum number of characters and is a certain degree of complexity. But it doesn't stop there. Remember that hashing and PRFs are built for speed, whereas KDFs are intentionally built to slow down. A modern cracking array can run through calculations of hashes on PRFs at a rate of billions or even trillions per second. That's why it's so important to be able to intentionally slow down a particular calculation. If I can slow down each of those calculations to even only take 0.1 seconds, now it'll take over 3,000 years to even do 1 trillion guesses, something that could be done earlier every single second. So you can see the benefit of using a KDF instead of a PRF or a hashing algorithm in password storage. So that's our lesson on pseudorandom functions. And in our discussion, we sort of talked about three different things. Hashing, pseudorandom functions, and KDFs. And I want to show you, as a summary, all three of the definitions on one screen so you really understand how they are similar and how they are different. A hashing algorithm is something that transforms input into deterministic fixed-length representational strings. A pseudorandom function does the same thing, but the input is a secret and a label, and of course a number of bits, and turns it into deterministic arbitrary length output that is indistinguishable from random data. And finally, a KDF. A KDF is the same thing as a PRF, but it also includes SALT and an intentional slowdown mechanism, making it a more secure but more computationally expensive version of a PRF. Now, I will say that some folks wouldn't consider a KDF as a type of PRF. I chose to do so for this lesson, but some people think it's a separate entity entirely. One way or another, as long as you understand the difference and similarities between these three concepts. So that's it for our lesson on PRFs, and in fact, our discussion of symmetric cryptography. In the next lesson, and the rest of the lessons in the series, we'll be looking at asymmetric cryptography. But that's it for this video. Your main takeaways are on your screen right now. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.